So Stability AI have now released the beta version, the test version of SDXL, the new uh, stable diffusion, which is going to be coming out later on in July. Now I've already spoken about this and I'm going to not try, to, I'm going to try to not repeat everything that I put in the, in the previous video. Uh, you, you can go and watch that one if you are interested in knowing more of the details. I wanted to talk about the experience of working with this, uh, th this new software, this new uh, stable diffusion with an eight gigabyte uh, RTX card. So you can see the kind of uh, results that they've got here. And some of the results are 404. Uh, some of the results are really quite impressive. This is where you download the model. And what now happens is they have a two stage process rather than just putting in the details and then uh, prompting it and then hitting uh, generate. What happens is that your prompt goes into a base model and then it produces a very small image. You get a larger uh, image coming out from what they call the refiner. So the latent uh, is kind of like working on a very small image, uh, very low resolution. And then we get the higher resolution stuff happening. Still not a hundred percent sure it's working exactly like this, but we'll show you the kind of results that I got. Um, the details are on the hugging, um, on the hugging face uh, page. And this is where you go to download it. Uh, you can download the trial version now. And um, you can also wait until later on, I think the 18th of July before downloading the official, which the official version when it uh, finally releases. Now, this is what it looks like. I was going to try to demonstrate a little bit of how it might work, but uh, for some reason it did not want to obey instructions whilst my screen recording software was running. So we're going to, we're going to try our best. We're using what's known as comfy UI, which uh, you can see here I've made fairly complicated, but what it basically does is that it feeds into a, a base layer, which is very low resolution. This is this guy here. And then this guy feeds into another guy. And maybe we can open this image. Nah, we can't. Um, this is the problem. I'm going to try to see if I can run the software whilst I'm recording. So here we are. Uh, <laughs> I've switched the, uh, the SDXL back on and you can see here, hopefully you can hear me. Okay. Cause it's, it's using up quite a lot of the system resources and sometimes it, 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 it interferes with the, with the, with the recording, but as you can see here, it is processing away. I can't stop it for whatever reason. And, uh, it's producing what, what I asked it to produce basically a, what I called a beautiful women sepia colors radiant smile Victorian dress triptych and it's producing these diptychs uh, and uh, triptychs and some you can tell they kind of look good uh, I think this is the base one the very low resolution one it then produces a higher resolution one and for whatever reason I've got it to produce a still higher resolution one uh, well, not a high resolution, but uh, one which is slightly different styling. But I'm going to focus on, on, on the more successful results. And you can see here, by and large, the results that we're getting are per perfectly fine. Um, this is after third level processing, which is not the default. And um, this is the kind of default final level processing. Generally looks good. And I gotta say, uh, well, let's open this up. I mean, that does look pretty good. That does look pretty good. So these were ones that I did earlier. I was very happy with the results here. And um, if we open this up, you can see what the typical results are like. And this has been the experience, typically getting uh, close to very good results most of the time, just randomly getting pretty decent results, pretty amazing results. So uh, currently Automatic 11.11 doesn't have it, but uh, this particular user interface does support it and is pretty easy to use. Uh, the graphics processor is put under 
quite a lot of strain when it's running and um, it uses up all the resources. It, it doesn't go, it's not very shy. It just, I mean, I've seen the processor running at temperatures that I very rarely get. So it's quite aggressive in how it uses the system resources, not just the graphics card. Uh, it looks complicated, but trust me, it is much, it, it is really very simple when you first open it up and start using it. Uh, you can get information on how to use Comfy UI on the web. I uh, might have a link in the description. So that's the image that we got. That's another image that we got that is just randomly popped up. And most of these images are pretty decent. And this is another triptych that I created. When I ask it to create a triptych, sometimes it creates these four part um, images. And this was one where I was working with a kind of a magical mirror uh, effect. The results pretty good. Most of the results are like this. They're kind of, <laughs> it looks like this was an attempt to create a, a studio light. It looks like it's got a studio light here. You've got the hexagonal shape, or is it octagonal shape of the studio lights there. And what I was asking it to do here was to create miniature planets uh, floating around. You can see it's got one almost floating, but it, it's sometimes so logical. It, it it has everything resting on the, on the on the desk rather than floating around the way I wanted it to. So these are some of the other ones which were based on the planets. Fairly abstract stuff. This was my favorite one. It managed to get the planets looking. I can see Jupiter there. Uh, I can see the crescent moon. I wanted something a little bit more surrealistic, but uh, I struggled with that. This was nice. This was an abstract. I did not expect it to be able to do something like this. This was a real surprise. Now the images that you're seeing, most of them are larger than 1024 by 1024. So it, it didn't completely break down when I pushed it beyond 1024 by 1024, but the default is 1024 by 1024, and it seems to work best uh, at 1024 by 1024. Sometimes you can sort of push it beyond that and it works fine. We're getting a kind of repetition here. This is, a, uh, I think this is the same woman, it's just showing her in different poses. And this looks good. One trouble I found with, with this beta version was the eyes. I couldn't get the eyes to be quite as good as I wanted them to be. Some of the models with 1.5 have got significantly better eyes. With this one, it I don't know how it figured out the lighting, but the lighting just looks magical. And this was a, another one where I was trying to get a very difficult effect, which is to get an island floating above the ocean and it gave more than I wanted. It gave us this sort of airship, but uh, the basic idea was achieved. Another example. And with this one, I wanted a steampunk uh, design. It, it, it creates these sorts of things effort, effortlessly. And there are fewer artifacts, there are far fewer artifacts than with the previous version. I gotta be honest, with the previous version, I hardly ever used the official uh, model, but this is the official model. It looks good. Uh, top hats, very difficult for the previous version to do because it's a kind of a complicated shape, but uh, it seems to have figured out how to do top, top hats. Another magical mirror, another one, and another one, and another one. Sometimes we're getting the long necks, which I don't know where those come from and it's kind of difficult to get it to avoid doing the, the, the long necks. But these are some of the successes that I had and uh, some more abstract ones. So overall, I, I gotta say it's very impressive. And when you're working with something like an eight gigabyte card, it doesn't take very long to, to produce these sorts of images. Um, I think with a 16 gigabyte card, you can probably produce larger images, but that will be more in the enlargement phase, perhaps once we have some more adventurous models that can handle larger than 1024 by 1024. As you can see here, this is larger than that, but the, 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 the composition begins to break down a little bit when you go beyond 1024 by 1024. 
I had lots of fun with it. And I think if you're using an RTX 30 series, maybe even 20 series, you should be fine with the eight gigabyte ones. It doesn't take too much effort to set it up. Once you get to the more powerful ones, the sort of um, uh, 4080, 4090, the performance is gonna be so much better. And uh, I think it'll be nice to, I think, I think the feeling of upgrading from uh, a mid-range RTX card to one of the high-end ones, 3090, 3090 Ti, 4080, 4090, I think the experience of upgrading to those ones is going to be quite, quite a nice experience for those people who do that. But guys, that's going to be it for this one. I uh, hope you found that useful. I'll have a few more uh, videos later on.